Peach. It's great why making it happen again today with some more Portal Knights. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm having a great day myself, and I'm pretty excited about today's video. We're going to take a little bit of a closer look at the different logic blocks, um, kind of one video at a time, so you guys have an easy reference back if you need to learn more about a certain block, know how it works. And today we're going to start with one of the most basic, one of the most um, essential blocks for your, your contraptions, your circuits, your builds with logic blocks, and that's the timer block. So let's take a look at it. This is the timer. Timers, the way they work, just spelled out as as easily as possible, is well, we can read this tooltip. It outputs on when the countdown expires. We have two inputs. Input one will start the countdown without sound, so you won't hear anything, but the countdown will start and then input two will reset the countdown. So say we have it at two seconds and we send a signal into it. After two seconds, it will turn on. And then regardless of if we're getting an input from number one or not still, it will turn on. And then number two will reset that and you'll have to put an input into number one again before it'll start again. So let's just ex let's, let's just kind of uh, explore how that works together really quick. But one thing we should make note of is that you can't really tell if they if the um, timer is on or not. It's kind of hard to tell. They do glow technically. Technically, they do have a glow to them, but it's really hard to see. So here's a tip that I want to give you guys. If you want to know if the timer is on or off, or any block is on or off for that matter, you can put a torch on top of it, get a connection from that block, and put it into the torch. Now we'll know if that timer is on or off, depending on whether or not the torch is actually lit. So let's take our green lever and let's put it into input number one. We'll stick with a two second countdown and let's go ahead and flip that lever and see what happens. I'm just going to flip it really quick. After two seconds, it turns on. Perfect. Now, if I flip that lever again, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't matter if we put another input into input number one, it's going to stay on. It doesn't matter what you do with, with uh, signals going in. You can leave the signal on. It's still going to take two seconds and then it'll start. Now, in order to turn that off, we need to use our reset input, which is input number two. So let's take this red lever. We'll get a connection from that, and we'll put it into input number two. If I flip this switch, it's going to turn it off. Now, something you should know about levers is that if I have this reset switch on, and then I try to turn it on, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times I flip this. It doesn't matter how long I leave this on. The most recent input... If it's still on, it's going to stay that way. So if I put an input in it, into the reset input, into input number two, and that's still on, it doesn't matter how much I try and turn it on. It's going to stay off because it's still resetting. Now, the opposite is also true. Say we... Oh, sorry. I had that on when I, when I removed it. So say... Yeah, this is a good example. So I can turn this on. It doesn't matter if I have this input number one on because input number two is already on. Now, if input number one is on and I remove input number two, it is going to turn on after two seconds. That is a thing. And if you have it on and your input one signal is on, you can put the input number two in to turn it off. But as soon as that's not on, if number one is still on, it's going to turn back on because it's still getting that constant signal into input number one. It's basically firing over and over and over and over and over again. It's constantly getting the signal from input number one. So as soon as two is not true, as soon as we don't have an input for number two, number one is still going to be receiving that signal. And two seconds later, it will turn on inevitably. Now, something interesting that you should know about timers is that we have this. Let's put it at five seconds for the cooldown. And let's flip that really quick. So we're going to have a five second cooldown and then it's going to turn on. We already know the reset button will turn it off after it's on. That's true. That's obvious. We've discussed that already. But something interesting about timers is that if you flip this to turn it on, we know we have a five-second cooldown. If I flip this, the reset, before the five-second cooldown is over, it will stop it. It won't actually turn on, so we won't end up getting a signal from this timer. So that reset button can be used to stop it from starting if you flip it before that timer is up. So a way you could see this working is, say, for example, we had a door. Let's grab a door. Any door is fine. Let's use this big blue one. Sure, the big blue door. Let's throw it down right here. And let's have this timer open that door. So if I flip this switch, five seconds later, it should open that door once it activates. And it does. Let's reset it, and it turns off. Now, let's have something like a pressure plate, for example. 
let's grab a red pressure plate that that would work just fine and let's have this pressure plate feed into the reset instead of this red lever we're going to use this pressure plate to reset it so if i flip this i have five seconds to get through the door but if i hit this pressure plate on the way it's not going to open so you could create a small easy puzzle with timers this is just one example there's a lot of other more insane crazy things you could do with this but this is just one very simple example of how you could use this cooldown and reset to create a small puzzle so if i wanted to turn it on i need i know i need to avoid this this pressure plate and then i should be able to get through this door once it opens so that's just one interesting thing about timers I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, that's pretty much all there is to know about how they work. Um, one thing you'll notice is that it's it's an easy way to to keep a signal. If you guys don't know already, we'll kind of go into a more in-depth video about this. But if we had an enemy, for example, an enemy right there, we could take a connection from the enemy and put it into input number one. And timers are actually good for storing inputs. So if you want something that, that knows if an enemy has been killed, what you can do is you can place this enemy here. This guy right here could be chilling out. He's just hanging out, doing his thing. And when we get a connection from him, it's going to say when he's dead, we're going to send a connect, uh, send a signal. And we'll put it into input number two, or number one rather, to turn it on. So now that timer, once we kill him, that timer will be on so that timer is is a good way to keep track of the fact that he is dead so as long as we don't have something resetting this timer we can say as long as this timer is on this guy is dead because this won't turn on until it gets a signal and the only thing sending a signal to it right now is him so we can keep track of the fact that he's dead by having him turn a timer on. That's one really good use for timers that you guys should know about. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an enemy. It could be a button. It could be a pressure plate. It could be... It could be any of these logic items that you can use. It could be any of these. So it's something that you should keep in mind. Any of these logic, any of these logic items, anything that sends a signal, you can, you can keep track of the fact that they have sent a signal by using a timer. And then if you want something to bring him back to life, if you want something that, that makes him come alive again, say like this pressure plate, when you step on it, he comes back to life. You can also say when he comes back to life, when this pressure plate is stepped on, it resets the timer. So that way he's alive again. That's the animation for him coming alive. So he's alive again, and that timer has been reset. So now that timer won't turn on again until he's dead and he sends another signal. So that's just some really easy things you can do with the timers. They're very, very useful. There are some other really cool things that we can do with the other logic block items, but I'm going to do individual videos for each of those as well. But I hope this answers some questions you guys might have about timers and how they work. The next video we're going to be looking at is going to be delays. So keep your eyes open for that next video. Delays are a very, very useful item. We're going to look at those a little bit more in depth. But until then... Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was useful. Make sure you like the video if you did like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really would appreciate it. Leave a comment if you have any other tips or tricks about timers. So if you guys want to browse through the comments, see if you can find anything else useful, make sure you guys put those down there. And give me any suggestions for other video tutorials that you might like to see because I'm always looking for cool new ideas, cool new things I can do with the logic blocks, and I would love to hear what you guys have for ideas. But thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have just the best kind of day. See you later, dudes.